What's good everybody, it's your boy Rexon Max, and I wanted to take the time to do this video to talk about the state of fighting games right now. Now we've seen a lot of debate on it on Twitter and stuff like that about if fighting games are becoming too easy right now, they're becoming brain dead, while well, old fighting games back in the day a whole lot better and stuff like that. Well, the signs all around us of where stuff is going is not only happening in fighting games, but many other forms of competitiveness. When you're talking about sports, anything like that, it's happening and you can see it. So we want to talk about that today and we can get a grasp on really what's happening with fighting games. So if you take a look at sports like basketball, basketball right now is a sport that is having an issue. It's so much offense in basketball. You're having people that's doing 70 point, 80 point games, seems like often. And it's because what's happening in basketball is they're doing so many rule changes and stuff like that to where it's like, you can't really play competitively defensively. It's like the rules are more catered to the more offensive side of the ball. So it's like defense is really limited in what they can do. And with these new and with this new talent that's coming in, they're able to score so much more, do so much of this, do so much of that. Even a lot of European players that come over like Jokic, they tell you that it's a lot easier to score playing American basketball because it's not as physical. Now we know back in the day they talked about how in the 90s and stuff like that when Michael Jordan was playing, it was a lot more physical. You could do a lot more defensively for to have a better chance against offensive players to stop them. That's why you see back in the day scores were only like in the low 80s or high 80s, 90s and stuff like that. But now you're seeing games getting 120, 130, 140. And even when you get to like the all-star game, I mean, they just score like over 200 points on the basketball game, which is kind of like unheard of. So that's one area where you see this happening. It's happening in football football is getting to a point to where you know they're trying to protect the players they're trying to make it more family and friendly and stuff like that they don't want people having concussions so they're starting to make more rules and stuff to where you can't do a lot of things defensively and what does this do this gives birth to an offensive boom a lot of people talk about tom brady kind of really benefited on the latter parts of his career because he was able to take advantage of defensive side of the ball being kind of you know handicapped and what they can do that's why he's able to get so many, you know, passing yards a year and all this other stuff before he retired. So we're seeing it in basketball and football that uh, the defensive side of the ball is being handicapped while you see the offensive side of the ball rise. And we're seeing the same thing in fighting games. It seems like fighting games are starting to become so offensive heavy. You see it in Tekken, you see it in Street Fighter, Drive Rush heat gauge all this other stuff you're seeing that stuff is just being so much more catered to offense now why is that now in basketball they're trying to do it because they want to watch they want to create a product that is fun to watch they want to create a product to where people can watch it and know what's going on really without having to know too much about basketball if you could cut on something and people are just scoring out the wazoo it looks amazing it looks fun it's something that you want to engage into but if you see a lot of deep defensive heavy games the mass audiences the casual audiences might not think that's pretty fun to watch they might think it's boring because not so much offensive action is happening shooting a ball making a shot and dunking is more appealing easier to the eye of somebody that's casual to know what's going on it's easy to tell somebody's winning if they're doing more of shooting of the ball same thing with football if, if somebody's scoring and making it into the end zone, you're seeing crazy passes and stuff like that and people are scoring, that's much easier to get into for a casual audience because they know what's going on. They don't really care too much about defensive schemes. Ooh, he stopped him, stopped that and all the other. They just really want to see a fun game, a fun time. Well, it's the same thing with fighting games. It's the same thing with a lot of people in the FGC. They want to see the pro players go to tournaments and win 60,000, 100,000, 200,000. We just had Capcom Cup give out a million. They want to keep seeing stuff like that happen now how was that gonna happen you gotta have a mass audience you gotta have a lot of people invested into this game want to watch this game want to participate want to spend their money to go to events buy the game enjoy the game do stuff in the game they got to have a mass audience and to have that mass audience in fighting games for the casual audience it's not going to be that fun to have a lot of matches where people are playing guile style back in the day like turtling waiting patient you know just flash kick sonic boom you know real turtle style of play that might not be really appealing to somebody that's not really that really into the science of fighting games but what is appealing 
it's kind of like boxing when you watch boxing it's, it's it was fun to watch a mike tyson fight that's why he was selling out so much a lot more than other people you knew when you went to go see a mike tyson fight he was knocking somebody out so it's the same with fighting games they want to watch a product or the or these gaming companies are starting to cater to make a product that one is easier for people to get into who want to play fighting games so they're making modern controls they're making uh gaming mechanics to where it's more offensive heavy more fun and easier to do those mechanics and then two at the same time it helps bring in an audience that want to watch such high offensive gameplay where people can easily tell who's when and who's not you know stuff like that so it's kind of like a which one do you want to choose type thing do you want fighting games to continue to be something that you really have to put a lot of effort into you know what i'm saying you have to uh really take your time in the game to be able to learn all the things about that game you know uh, um what the skill gap back in the day was widened to where it's like not everybody could get into this game and actually be successful at a certain level because you had to invest a lot of time you had to really 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 dedicate yourself to a fighting game to get good in it but now we're just seeing a lot of people do rps play in fighting games rock paper scissors like i can do that it beats this if it doesn't beat that then i can just do this it's very simple you know you're just seeing the same things over and over again you're gonna start to see that you know stuff are gonna have to be simpler for people to get into this game if you want a lot of people to invest into this game and audiences newer audiences to start fighting fighting games more appealing so it's like you're gonna have to choose do you want more money in fighting games or do you want fighting games to go back to what it originally was you know i like to say kind of it's like we're losing the integrity of fighting games because I feel like the way that fighting games were made back in the day was how they were supposed to be made. They were supposed to be difficult, harder entry, harder, um, wider skill gaps and things of that nature. If you weren't willing to invest the time, then I mean, go play something else. But nowadays we see these companies like Bandai Namco and stuff. They want to make money. How are you going to make money? You got to make fighting games easier to get into. And for these tournaments, you got to make fighting games fun to watch. So this is just where it's going. And we're seeing it all around. This is this is not nothing new. If you pay attention, and it's happening everywhere. It's nothing that's, you know, unique to fighting games. So it's, it's kind of like a thing you have to choose. You want these huge, huge, huge money prizes and stuff like that then i mean this is where fighting games are going and if that's what you want you want to stick more towards the money then you can't say anything about where fighting games are going but if you're somebody that really wants fighting games to stay unique have all these different players with many different styles and stuff like that i mean it really takes away from a lot of players because we know a lot of players they're more defensive heavy. we know goichi as a player who's very very defensive heavy and nowadays it's like you're not getting rewarded for defense you actually are hurt or hindered or you know the opposite of you know rewarding if you play more defensive heavy so it, it it's like it's so much that comes with this and it's just a conversation to have but you know it's just something i wanted to get on here and talk about what do you guys think what do you guys think about where fighting games are going the future of it things of that nature you guys let me know in the comment section down below.